Time for a Nerd Files episode here. We, uh, we have these test keys that we use to test the cuts on the stone, make sure that we're making the right structure and that it's all coming out right before we run a bunch of final structures. Um, and this one happened to end up having a cool illustration on it. Two of our most popular structures are B363 and B363+. 363 is a universal cold structure, very tolerant of a wide range of crystals, and probably the highest volume grind that we do. B363 Plus is a version of B363 that uses the same frequency relationships and basic architecture, and in fact the same first layer, but um, is built with higher volume for uh, more moisture management capacity, and it seems to be very, very tolerant of... Um, new snow crystals, which is tough on wet grinds, but also quite good for crystal management. Had good results in a wide range. I'm going to uh, change camera setups here so I can show you more detail. The macro setting on this new camera is so cool. Um, so this is the basic fine linear structure that is at the root of all of these things. Um, here's, here's my illustration. This is cut with a pretty fine diamond. If you can see the little black thing in the end there, this diamond does well in a range of structures that uh, we would call pretty fine. And it's one of several. We, we run a bunch of, we run a lot of diamonds in rotation. These are extremely fine, our 1502, 1503. Everything else down here is graduating uh, shapes from the 1504. 1502 is 1 1.5 millimeters by 0 0.2 millimeters. 1503, 1.5 by 0.3, etc. But those are nominal dimensions, manufacturing specs, and there's variants in there. So all of these are nominally 1504, but they're different. They're all different. So this one uh, we use for the for the finer cuts, and that includes this this basic starting cut here. Now the real art of these grinds is that they are. Um, layered structures and the depth and texture that results is quite critical to the whole thing. So this B363 is a fairly mild structure and it is finished with this specially shaped diamond. It's got some pink marker on it. We call it the pink diamond. It's quite an old diamond. I've had it for a long time but it, it, it always tends to run to the dull end of things and resolve to a pretty flat surface and, and we modify it a little bit. So it's got sort of a broad flat surface to it and it makes a cut like this one. So when this cut overcuts this cut, we're actually using the flat section up here to knock down some of the peaks and smooth this thing out. And then the linear, linear, linear interference creates good release points. But in the horizontal. A lot of crossing structures, the release points are in and out of the base, and what we want is to have more uh, horizontal release instead of all this vertical. We want, want the ski to hover. <laughs> That's what we think of it as. 363 Plus utilizes this diamond, which makes really, really nice cuts in the moderate to wider range, and we cut a shape more like this. It's got more depth and more roundness to it, and we float it in much lighter. A lot of these structures are floated onto the base, not just buried. We could cut all the way past this fine structure, but what we wanna do is take, take these little hills and just kind of float the valleys down in and clear out some of them, but leave, leave some of the texture here and we get a busier, deeper and more turbulent structure that can move more moisture. That is B363 plus right there. 363. 363 plus. Let's look at it from the snow's point of view. This is my favorite. What does the snow see? This is B363. I'm going to try to be smooth and steady. As we approach the groove, we're going to come to the transition. The transition's not perfectly smooth because I just dropped the new cut on. But here we are. See it? Whoa! Back up. B363. 
B363 plus. Cool. One of the tricks to grinding skis is that uh, this drive wheel pushes down on the ski. The stone takes the texture, we cut it on, and then the drive wheel pushes down on the ski and that creates the downforce required to uh, decide whether you're really burying the cut onto the ski or floating it. And the problem is this, when the ski's going through like this and this drive wheel is sitting on it, the drive wheel is climbing up the ski and because it's being forced upward against the pneumatic pressure in this cylinder that's pushing it down, it actually uh, creates little additional force. But when it gets to the backside, there you go, come all the way through, goes over the bridge and it gets to the backside. Now it's going downhill and because that is relieving the the, uh, the pressure on it, the, it nets out to less force being put on the ski. This is a problem with all grinders because the application of force and the traction that pushes the ski through the machine are one and the same. Um, you have this change in net force at the stone. Uh, there are some really fancy electronic ways of, of dealing with it, but um, these Tassari machines, have this really cool vario switch. So this little switch here gets hit by the tip when the ski comes across and when this when the grinder sees that that's been hit, it recognizes that there's a distance there. Yep, there's a distance here. And it says, oh, now we're 15 centimeters or so into the ski and I can program the pressure to change along the length of the ski based on the centimeters. Essentially, anywhere in the middle here is just about fine. Whether it's a classic ski or a skate ski, exactly where a transition occurs doesn't matter. But we can up the pressure on the tail of the ski in order to balance out the uh, downforce along the ski. This is really critical in a couple ways. Well, the capacity is cool because it allows us to make deeper structure on the tail if that's what we want. On the other hand, the way we end up using it much more is when we're doing these layered structures and we want to have um, the right balance of overcut. A lot of the structures, we're building a surface and then modifying it, not trying to obliterate it. And when we're floating that structure, the amount of pressure is really critical. So without that switch on there and the capacity to change up the pressure along the length of the ski is really difficult. And in fact, what we had to do in the old days was apply a little bit of extra hand pressure on the tail. Not very scientific, but it was better than nothing. Anyway, that's that's how it goes. This B363, 363 plus. That's the story.